Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite techniques that I truly believe is underutilized across the country for uh, not just all species of bass, but most species of game fish that feed on bait fish. You know, I've caught lots of walleye, I've caught pike, I've caught uh, musky, crappie, perch, you name it on this lure. And it's just something that, you know, I know we hear a little bit about, but it's not something that I think gets the credit that it deserves for being a truly good fish catching bait. And, you know, I, I've got a couple of questions about it from talking about it on previous videos or mentioning it on previous videos. So I wanted to, to touch base with it and tell you guys how I fish it. Before I do that, I just want to let you guys know uh, to make sure to subscribe to the channel because I, I give away sponsor related products on a monthly basis to my subscribers. So we always give away uh, a Bridgeford, uh, Bridgeford Foods Jerky Prize Package on a monthly basis. I'll give away reels from Abby Garcia. I've given away lots of baits from Berkeley, uh, Dirty Jigs. I've got, I've just, you know, I give away a lot of stuff to you guys as an appreciation for you guys watching the videos. And to be entered, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel. So if you have not subscribed yet, please make sure you do that to be entered into my monthly drawings. Once you subscribe, you're, you're good to go for your shot at winning for, you know, the rest of the time that you're a subscriber. So uh, please do that. So to get into the, our topic for today, I want to talk about this little bait. So in the world of fishing, this is called a spy bait. This one specifically is the Berkeley Spy uh, 70, I believe is the size on it. Uh, this is a slow sink. They come in like fast sink models. Uh, you know, it kind of became a popular bait a handful of years ago. Uh, Duo Realis makes one, the spin bait. And the whole, that's kind of what started the spy bait craze. And there's a lot of them now made by multiple, multiple companies. And I've tried a whole bunch of them, but there's really only two that I find that fill the need that I want my spy bait to perform. So the Berkeley one is phenomenal. And the original, the Duo Realis makes a really good bait as well. And what, to me, what makes a good bait are a couple of things. First, you want small props on the front and back. You do not want oversized props. You want something that's just gonna create a little bit of disturbance in the water, but not be overwhelming. You know, some of the baits that are on the market just have really large propellers, and I feel like they're just pushing off way more water than needs to be. You're just trying to create some, some sort of disturbance that will let the fish know that it's there, but you don't want to be overwhelming either. And that's that's where a lot of the other baits I feel like go wrong. They have oversized propellers that really just create too much disturbance and I feel like they almost push fish away versus piquing their interest and in getting them to come up and eat. So to me, a good spy bait uh, has small propellers on the front and back. The other thing that I found that needs to be uh, it needs to have is a good flat belly, you know, like that. There's not really any concaveness to it. It's just a flat, straight, flat belly. And you don't find that on many baits. The Berkeley one has a great one. And to be honest with you, the Berkeley uh, Spy has the best shimmy that I found in any of the Spy baits that I've tried. And it all has to do with that flat belly. And that's one reason I like this bait so much. The Duo Realis is really similar. It's got a flat belly on it too. But that flat belly is what gives it the shimmy when it falls. So when it falls, it literally is going like this at a slow sink. I mean, it's, you know, it's just doing this nice little shimmy dance. And it's kind of, it's got that same, that flatness is the same way that a lipless crankbait works. The lipless crankbait has a flat front on it, which then when pulled through the water is what creates the bait to, to wiggle back and forth. The same thing is said for a, a, a spy bait, that flat belly, when it falls, is what allows it to, to shimmy down like that. And to me, that is, you know, just as important as the small blades. I want something that's going to give it some motion when it's just slowly falling through the water column. Because a lot of your bites on this bait will come 
when you're just falling, you know, letting it fall to the depth that you want to retrieve it at. Other than that, guys, you know, I think you want a smaller profile uh, and super, super sharp hooks. Those are the main features that I I personally like when choosing spy baits. Um, so to, to talk about the setup that you want to use this bait on, I personally like to throw it on a really long rod. I throw it, you know, again, I build my own rods. So for you guys to try to compare it to, to the rod that I use, it's an MHX SJ9000 blank. So it's a seven and a half foot blank and it's a, it's like a zero to a one power. So it's pretty much a light action to medium light action rod uh, with a, a moderate fast action. You know, it's very parabolic. And the reason I like that rod is it allows me to load up and cast this thing an absolute mile. I mean, I can send this bait so far, it's ridiculous. But what I like about that is a lot of the times when I'm using this bait, it's in gin clear water. So I want to get the bait as far away from the boat as possible. And that rod allows me to do it. I think you want more of a moderate, uh, fast action rod because you're... You, you, the fish are going to come up and grab this and you're straight retrieving it. So you want there to be some good give in your rod. If you've got too fast of an action rod, that rod is going to want to pull the bait away from the fish when they try to eat it. So I personally prefer a, a moderate fast action rod, which is one of the reasons I throw that long, uh, light action rod. So with respect to the rod, I then throw it on six pound test line. Again, this is really a clear water blade, uh, bait for me. So I throw it on six pound, all 100% fluorocarbon. I do not throw it on a braid to fluorocarbon leader. And the reason I do that is I generally want to keep this bait down. I do not want it rising to the surface and braid floats. So when I put braid to a fluorocarbon leader, the, the braid wants to rise this bait through the water column, and I want to do everything I can to keep it riding parallel at the level that I want it to be at. And the fluorocarbon, being that fluorocarbon sinks, helps me keep this bait down in, in that level that I want. Now, I will say if I'm fishing this bait relatively shallow, so, you know, 8, 10 foot or less, where I've got this bait down halfway to the bottom, so in 4 or 5 foot, you can get away with a braid to fluorocarbon uh, leader. With a, I would just recommend using a longer leader length uh, versus a shorter leader length. But if I'm trying to keep this bait down, say in 10, 15, 20 foot for suspended fish, I definitely go with an all fluorocarbon line setup because it helps me keep that bait down. When it comes to the retrieval of this bait, it's pretty simple. You're really looking at throwing it out you want to count it down to the level that you want to fish it at and then just use a nice, super slow, steady retrieve and you're pretty much letting the bait do the work for you. I have found that the more action you try to impart in this bait, the less bites you get. You know, I will definitely use a stop and go, but I'm not twitching my rod at all. I'm throwing it out, counting it down to the level that I want to fish it and I'm just slowly retrieving it, you know, through the water column. Because of that, I do recommend a slower speed reel, uh, slower gear ratio. You know, instead of using something that's super fast, a slower retrieve ratio reel will help you keep it down in the water column. But that's totally up to you guys. You know, you know, I, I've put out videos in the past that say with a high speed reel, you can still control it. It's just easier to control that speed with a slower speed reel. But, you know, other than that, when it comes to fish, this bait shines all year. It really gets a lot of its credit in the winter slash pre-spawn period, but you can use it year round, especially for large, uh, for spots and smallmouth. It's a great year round bait for smallmouth up here in the North. I definitely throw it year round. And again, I've had good success on spotted bass year round, uh, for large mouth. I would say it hasn't shined as much during the summer but it's, it's still a great bait. You can get bit on it all the time. You know, up here in the North country, I'm going to be throwing it here coming up real soon. You know, I, I tell you, it shines anytime you're fishing an isolated piece of cover, you know, whether it's a brush pile or on the great lakes, if you're fishing a shipwreck, throw it out over that. 
steady retrieve you know at a, at a few feet off over that cover and you'll get bit doing it the other thing that i like to do with this bait is fish flats that have good mixture of of uh you know rock weed sand patches anything that's got a little bit of uh, differences throughout that flat it's a great way to cover water and you know get some really good good bites on it so give it a try guys the spy bait you know again i don't think people use it enough i don't think it gets enough credit for being a really good fish catching bait and it's one of those things that once you learn how to do it you'll find that you're throwing it way more than you ever thought you would so guys if you enjoy the video please hit that like button share it on social media if you've got some other spy baits that you think people might want to try throw it up in that comment section and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching, guys.